Good evening. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jarrett. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back where I used to get the hives in this room. Um, it was Stephen Jay Gould's The History of Earth and Life. You all wouldn't remember that, uh, at least judging by the median age, but it's fun to sort of be at the front of the room. Uh, at least I know I won't be having to take an exam afterwards. Uh, I'm Jarrett Barrios. I'm the CEO of the American Red Cross in Eastern Massachusetts. Delighted to be here to talk to you about my big idea, which may not be such a big idea, but it's quite a big challenge for me, and like me, for others who do the kind of work I do, humanitarian service work. You probably know, if you watched any of the coverage from Superstorm Sandy, that the Red Cross is in the business of saving lives, of helping people who've uh, run into harm's way. We've served over 11 million meals and sheltered tens of thousands of people in that particular incident. But every year here in Massachusetts, we probably um, we, uh, help take care of about 1,000 families who lose their homes to house fires. We run the largest food pantry in New England, feeding 125,000 families a year right here in eastern Massachusetts, and much, much more. The most impressive thing about this, which gets to the challenge, is that we do all this work with a pretty small staff and a whole lot of volunteers. <coughs> Volunteerism, something that 100 years ago, was uh, the Red Cross pretty much had the market cornered on. We had 19 million members of the Red Cross in 1910. Uh, I guess that was, what, 103 years ago. We today, um, where if you've read books like Bowling Alone, you know people don't engage, they don't join in the way they once did. And yet, disasters still happen, need still exists. The Red Cross commitment to be there to everybody remains. That gets to our challenge, which is, in essence, a brand challenge. The Red Cross, um, in these, uh, I don't know, you can't really see this. I thought the screen was going to be a little bigger. You ask people about the Red Cross, it's a friendly thing, it's reliable, we are socially responsible, we are trustworthy. Just like those brands, Sears, Kleenex, the US Postal Service. Well, I'm a volunteer on Wednesday nights. I go out with our disaster team when there's a fire. The average age of the team I go out on, or the median age, is 72 years old. I am 30 years younger than the median age. 98.6% of the work we do at the Red Cross is done by volunteers. If we are the US Postal Service and people don't mail things anymore, we've got a problem. And that's really the challenge that I wanted to talk about briefly today. Uh, briefly, I'm on time. This is what we want to be. Yes, we want to be trustworthy, but we also want to be authentic, up-to-date, energetic. It's nice to be Sears, but we need, in 2013, to be IKEA. And how does the Red Cross morph itself? We're a large national organization with large regions and volunteers who've been doing it for 40 years and don't necessarily want to let go of stuff. That's our challenge, to reach all of you. We have to emigrate or migrate ourselves to a new generation and reach you in a way that inspires you to do what your parents did and what your grandparents did, which is help their neighbors who've lost their homes to fire or worse, who've seen their homes float off in a hurricane. That challenge is not an easy one and we are working hard and I want to just tell you about a few things that we are doing to confront that challenge in Massachusetts. We call it the 21st century challenge. Migrating Red Cross from the 19th century and Clara Barton, our founder, our roots. You know, Clara Barton was a long time ago, but she was a battlefield nurse. She was doing pretty cutting edge things, not just for women, but for all people in her day. And bringing that, that kind of force, in Spanish the word is coraje, that force to 2013. So, We've begun to change our image a little bit here in eastern Massachusetts. This is a cover of our annual report. Wanting to change our brand a little bit, freshen it, have pictures of younger folks. Kind of make it a little more applicable, resonant with folks. We're doing a lot more selling, speaking to younger folks at our meetings. We're also confronting the challenge of a diverse community that once didn't exist. When I started, we had 2,000 volunteers 
in our database. When we actually went through and called down it, we had about 700 people who were still volunteering with the Red Cross here in Massachusetts. Four of them spoke Spanish out of 750, and I was one of the four. So we have undergone a tremendous effort at reaching out, not just to places where young people go, but places where, well, not your traditional Red Cross volunteer resides. We've partnered with church groups. We've gone to cultural associations. 73% of our new volunteers speak a language in addition to English. We've enrolled over 1,000 in the last year, over 1,000 new volunteers, over doubling our capacity. And we've also, recognizing that it isn't just about getting volunteers, but engaging a larger population in what the Red Cross does, not just to donate, not just to volunteer, but to understand who we are and support us, we've started using things like social media. Social media, which, you know, Twitter, Facebook, and other engagement tools. Recently, we, um, we uh, uh, taking, uh, I don't know if any of you believed in this Mayan apocalypse uh, from 2012 in December, but we took a play on that as a way of engaging people in some of the core work of the Red Cross. Um, we did a play, oh, I'm doing it backwards, sorry. There we go. We did a play on that. Can we make it bigger? Awesome. We wanted to engage people in how they can learn how to take care of themselves if there's a hurricane or tornado, an earthquake. 25-year-olds aren't going to go to the U.S. Postal Service website and go eight page views in to find the directions on what to do when there's an earthquake. But they will go to an app. And we have a first aid app, we have a hurricane app, we have earthquake app, things that are actually quite useful to folks. We also developed a zombie apocalypse game, encouraging people to play the game. To win, you've got to know what to do when there's an earthquake, when there's a tornado. And you know what? We saw engagement with 16-year-olds shoot through the roof, not surprisingly. We've also, in addition to engaging people in social media, gone back to our roots a little bit. Traditional engagement, you know, like at a bar. We have a group called Flirting with Disaster, where we invite young people. <laughs> That's a great name. You don't know what it is. Like, when I mentioned alcohol and Red Cross, people are like, no! <laughs> but sometimes you need to bring people in who might not otherwise come in, and we're not teetotalers, for gosh sakes. We're about preparedness and safety, and it's working. We get 100 people at these events. We recruit 30 to 40 new volunteers at these events, people that would never have otherwise thought to join the Red Cross. When our mission is to help anybody in need. And the scope of disasters sometimes are small, but sometimes, as we saw with Sandy, can be very large. We have to do everything we can do to do that. And I'm going to wrap up with one last picture. It's uh, kind of hard to see. Again, if the screen were a little bit bigger, that is a meeting of today's, or actually last Wednesday's, Wednesday night Metro Boston disaster team. Remember I said that the median age when I started was 72 years old? You can't, I guess I thought that, again, the screen would be a little bigger. The median age today is 28 years old for that same team. You'll also notice there's diverse faces around that table. That is the Boston that we live in and that is going to help respond to their neighbors, neighbors who might not speak English, neighbors who might not remember what World War II was like. We have to be, <laughs> we have to be there for everybody, and to do that, we want to reflect that so that our work can continue. Thank you very much. That's the idea we're going to talk about. Actually, can I say one last thing? I just, um, I want to say one last thing, which is, um, as an alumni, we didn't have winter session. What a great idea. And what a great idea that the alumni have recently, because I've never donated to Harvard before, and the alum, there's now actually a socially responsible option uh, when you invest. And I just want to say, Kudos to Harvard. Kudos to Harvard. I'm finally going to contribute. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>